Hey, welcome back everyone to the Essen Reza podcast. My name is Essen Reza, your host. And as you can tell, we are in a different studio today. Uh, I want to make sure that I get these podcasts out to you guys on a consistent basis. So we are in a makeshift studio and a big shout out to Savannah Productions for putting this together for me last minute. Uh, came in really clutch so that I can still put out content on a regular and consistent basis. So thank you for that. Now, today's episode is a really important episode and it was actually a conversation that I had with my younger brother a couple of weeks ago where we were talking about how the heck are millennials or first time home buyers going to enter the market in the greater Toronto area given that prices have skyrocketed. And he just asked me the question and he was like, you know, I'm 20 years old, you know, how expensive is it going to be for me to buy a house? And I feel like this is a topic that isn't really discussed a lot, sometimes it's swept under the rug because people realize and don't want to talk about the fact that, you know, a lot of our new generation may never be able to enter the market and not to their own fault, but just because of the prices and the way they are going, especially if you're living in the greater Toronto area. Now add the fact that inflation is taking place and cost of living is going up, that doesn't help either. And that kind of backtracks us into getting into that dream of home ownership. So in this video, what I hope to achieve is to address you guys, the millennial buyers, the first time buyers, people that have hopes and dreams of getting into a home and at least provide you with some tips, some ideas, some tricks that I used to help me expedite the process. And these solutions or ideas may not work for everybody, but for someone who's in a position uh, to maybe take these ideas and apply them, it may expedite that process for you and maybe help you get into the market a lot faster than you thought. Now, what are the two barriers of entry that prevent new home buyers from entering the market? Well, number one is the down payment, and number two is not being able to qualify for a mortgage. Now, the average home price in the GTA hovers around a million, 1.1, and incomes don't really keep up with qualifying rates. So for example, just a rule of thumb, if you make $100,000, you're probably gonna be able to qualify for about five to six times that income. So if you make 100 grand, you know, rule of thumb, you'll probably qualify for about 500,000. And so now what that means is, not only do you have to come up with a higher down payment, but you also have to find ways of maybe increasing your income to be able to qualify for a home in the Greater Toronto area. So how do we solve this issue? So here are five ideas that you may wanna look into that may help you achieve, that may help you overcome these barriers of entry. First and foremost, you need to lay down the groundwork. What I mean by that is that you have to write down a plan. So me, for example, when I bought my first house, I didn't just wake up one day and say, I want to buy a house. You know, I did wake up one day, I did put that in writing, but I made a plan. I made a detailed game plan and a strategy. So what I did was I said in three years, I'm going to buy a home in this and this location. And when I had that plan in writing, when I had a deadline set, what it allowed me to do was actually start saving more, thinking of ideas to, you know, how can I increase my income? How can I save more money? Without a plan, without a game plan, you're probably going to be taking two steps back and you're not going to have any idea or any purpose on how to expedite this whole process for yourself. The second thing is to start getting into a habit of saving. So my father always told me that if you can't save 50 bucks a month, you're not gonna save $1,000. So even though you have saved, let's say 50 bucks or 100 bucks a month, it's still something. It sounds like it's not a big amount or a big deal, but I'm telling you, once you start saving, even if it's 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 150 a month, gradually over time, you'll figure out ways and ideas to save even more. But the first step is to get into the habit of saving so that you can now learn to save more money as more money comes into your pocket. The third thing to do is to increase your income and decrease your expenses. So increasing your income. So maybe you find ways or side hustles that will help put more money into your pocket 
whether it's Uber, whether it's Uber Eats, whatever it is, maybe it's a side hustle or something like that. Maybe it's an after hour part time job that you can do for yourself later on. Things like that that will increase your income. The second thing may be to decrease your expenses. So, for example, for those people that are blessed enough to maybe have a home where they used to live with their parents, maybe you move back in with your parents for a couple of years, save that rental expense that you would have paid otherwise, and make sure that you save that, don't spend it, and use that rent expense that you were going to pay for rent and put it into maybe a down payment saving. The next important thing is to maintain good credit and also not to take on too much debt. One of the biggest reasons why people don't qualify for a mortgage or qualify but don't get a good rate is because their credit is really bad. And the reason why their credit is bad is because they haven't learned to manage their debt. Maybe they've take on, taken on too much debt. Maybe they've spent too much on their credit cards and they've missed their payments. There's been stories about clients of mine where you know, by missing one or two payments, it's impacted their credit score and impacted the amount of qualification or the rates that they can qualify for. So it's very important to make sure you manage your credit. Don't take on too much debt. Don't splurge on expenses, cars, you know, goods that maybe you don't need right now if you're aggressively trying to save for a down payment. Last but not least, and I keep reminding my younger buyers out there is that this is not a race so if it takes you three years five years six years to come up with a down payment that's absolutely okay because if you don't start somewhere you're not going to start at all so let don't let that pressure get to your head you may see your friends families cousins siblings buying properties but remember don't compare yourself to them take as long as you want be play in your comfort zone the key thing is to get started and make sure that you have a game plan ready so that one day you will achieve that goal. But if you don't have it in writing, if you don't have a plan ahead of you, then you're never really going to start. So you got to start somewhere. Now let's talk about some ideas and tips on how to get into the real estate market a lot quicker and maybe even fast tracking the process. So if you've got a little bit of down payment to play with, but let's say you need a little bit more, what do you do? Well, I've got a few clients right now that actually are leveraging their family members or parents. See, a lot of us have parents who may have a house that's already paid off or who may have an investment property. Don't be afraid to go up to them and ask them if they can leverage their property and maybe refinance or take out equity for your down payment. Actually, a lot of home buyers in Canada, especially millennials, are getting assistance from their parents who are subsidizing their down payment or at least part of it. So I always say if you have that avenue available to you, you have to ask. If you don't ask, you'll never know. And that's one great way to get down payment or increase your down payment so that you can get into the market a lot faster. The second idea is to co-purchase with a friend or a business partner. This allows you and your friend or your partner to combine your down payment and purchase a property that you both like together and get into the market a lot quicker. Sometimes, you know, yes, that does divide your profits and you have to share that property with somebody else. But in an environment like the GTA where prices are so high, this may be the next best option if you want to get into the market. The next thing is to consider all of your options when you're looking at homes. See, the first home you buy is not going to be your dream home. It's not going to be the last house you're going to live in. So even if, let's say, you purchase a small condominium apartment that you feel that you can live in for the time being or invest into, it might not be a bad idea because it helps you get into the property ladder. I started with a small condo. You know, I used that condo later on to sell it, it increased in value, and I was able to use that money to buy a bigger house down the road. So don't be afraid to get into a property that may not be your ideal property now, but it may serve you for the time being. The next thing to consider is to actually continue renting, but maybe purchasing an investment property on the side. So maybe you're renting a property right now and you're getting a really good deal from the landlord and you don't really wanna break that rental contract because you may not find that rent anywhere else. 
nothing wrong with renting. Keep renting that property. But if you have money on the side that's just sitting around, don't be afraid to invest that money into a property on the side and use that property to build equity down the road as well. Another idea that I myself have done and my investors have done is to look outside your city to invest. So if the GTA is too expensive, then you can consider markets like Barrie, Kingston, Windsor, London, where sometimes you can actually buy a house for half the price and still get amazing rates of return and rental demand on those properties. I've done it myself, and I know one of the biggest objections for that is, you know, I'm too far away from the property, how am I gonna manage it? Well, take myself for example, I've bought a property that's three hours away and eight hours away from where I live, but I've been able to manage it because I've hired a property manager who I've done my due diligence on, I've researched on who they are, and thankfully so far they've done a good job for me. And you gotta understand, when our parents bought their homes, you know, they didn't buy in the city of Toronto, they bought further away, and eventually those cities developed and became something to what they are now. And so think of it as if we're in the same boat. Now I know we have to buy maybe somewhere even further, but times are changing, and so we have to adapt to the times and think of creative ways think outside the box so that we can get into the market and create equity on our own. The last item on this topic is to purchase a house that allows you to rent a portion of the property so that can help you pay off your mortgage and expenses. Now, I had a friend who had a property in Guelph and he actually found a property where he could rent out a room in the basement. And he charged about 700 to 800 bucks a month and he used that money to help pay off his mortgage a lot faster. Fast forward five years down the road, he was able to sell that property at a good profit and now buy a semi-detached and upsize into a bigger property. And now he doesn't have to rent out a portion of his home because he built so much equity in that property before that renting out that room, although it wasn't ideal and convenient for him at the time, he knew that was a sacrifice that he would have to make in order to enjoy the home he's living in right now. So consider that as an option as well, buying a property that may have a basement that's rentable. Maybe you wanna rent a room in your home uh, that will allow you to bring in some income and that can help you pay off your mortgage faster. Now I wanna talk about the actual home buying process and what are some common mistakes that home buyers make? How do you avoid these mistakes? And there are four common mistakes that I find that a lot of home buyers, especially new millennials, uh, will make before they enter the market. The first thing is not getting a pre-approval. I see a lot of people shopping for homes, looking at homes, going in, even uh, visiting open houses, and they think they have an idea as to what they can afford, but really they don't because they've never spoken to a mortgage broker or a bank. So the very first thing you need to do is speak to a mortgage broker, find out what you can afford so that when you are looking for homes, you can look for homes that fit within your criteria and within your budget. The second mistake that a lot of new home buyers make is not understanding what their monthly expenses are going to be. So let's say even if you are qualified for a home that's worth $600,000, for example, does that really mean that you can afford that property? Well, you have to scale back and look at what your monthly expenses are going to be. It's not just your mortgage, it's also your property taxes, it's gonna be your insurance, it's gonna be your utilities, it's gonna be maybe repairs and maintenance. Uh, maybe you bought a condo that has a maintenance fee attached to it. So you have to factor in all of these expenses and you have to make sure that you're able to afford those expenses on a monthly basis. I even recommend to my clients that even if you feel that you can afford those monthly expenses, but you're kind of living paycheck to paycheck, you may want to consider waiting a little bit or maybe finding something a little bit cheaper because we want to be in a situation where we can enjoy the home that we're living in. Living house poor, living paycheck to paycheck just to meet expenses, just to say that we have a house is not a lot of fun. So buy a house, but buy a house that you can afford and buy a house that you can enjoy. And the best way to enjoy your home is to buy something that you can actually pay for. The next biggest mistake that home buyers will make is not considering or factoring in their closing costs. So along with your down payment, you have to also make sure that you have about two to 3% 
budgeted or factored into your closing costs. These closing costs can be your land transfer tax, which is a one-time tax that every home buyer in Ontario has to pay to the government. And the other fees involved are going to be inspection fees. Uh, you can have legal fees. Uh, you might have appraisal fees. These are things that your mortgage broker and realtor will educate you on. But make sure that you take these closing costs into consideration and add them to your total expenses when you're purchasing a home. The last mistake that a lot of home buyers will make is being too unrealistic. You often see people looking at homes that they can't afford and they want everything and anything for the least amount possible. And that's not possible, especially if you're living in the GTA. Like I said before, your first home may not be your ideal home, but what's important is to get onto the property ladder, find yourself a property that can serve you well for the time being and use that property to build equity so that down the road, you can either sell that property, take that bigger chunk of down payment and purchase your dream property down the road. So don't be unrealistic. You know, if you want a four to five bedroom home that's 5,000 square feet for $500,000, that's not gonna happen. You gotta be very realistic in what you want, especially if you're planning on buying a house in the greater Toronto area. I hope this information was helpful to you guys. If you are a millennial buyer and are still struggling to find your footing into the market, make sure you take my advice that I provided earlier seriously, and hopefully that expedites your process into getting into a home. And if you have any further questions, there are so many other ideas that I can provide. Reach out to me, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll be happy to help you move forward into your home buying journey. Thank you very much and see you in the next episode.